What is up, everyone? Anthony here. This time of year with retail, it gets a little busy for me to put out content as fast as I can. But I've been streaming. I've been hanging in there. And I've also been uh, thriving to get back into it. So this is a episode where we brought back Perry. It's been about four years since he's made his appearance on the show. Uh, the show did start January of 2013, so we're almost five years old. Five, yes. Five years strong. Still doing this, so don't forget to share this episode. Don't forget to like this on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash Let's Talk Resident Evil. And also join the group Let's Talk Resident Evil on Facebook and Twitter. Follow me on Let's Talk underscore RE. And don't forget to rate, comment, and download on iTunes and Libsyn for free. For free. There's no sponsors, no ads. There's just me telling you about the episode. And that's it. So there you go. This was a lot of fun. Me and Perry, we I uploaded a video back in August. Fans reacting to the aftermath of Resident Evil 7, which is what this episode might be called. Obviously, with this video, uh, I can't take everything Perry says seriously, everything that I say. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We joked around. But honestly, a lot of Perry's views were a lot of the ones that you guys, yes, you the listeners, shared. A lot of you guys shared the same opinions. So that's what's cool about the community is that we're all one and the same sometimes, even though we might have different opinions. So it's interesting to hear both sides and to read your responses. So that's one thing that I've been uh, trying to do a lot more on the episodes is to get the community interaction on a you know top priority to read off the comments and to hear your thoughts because that's what matters. So definitely let us know what you think about this episode and maybe what future discussions you'll have. Me and John are going to sit down and do another recording session very really soon, and that's going to be also out probably before Christmas. I'd like to. Um, but anyway, and also, a lot. I've getting in a lot of comments or also messages uh, concerning Richard and uh, whether or not Richard would be back on the show. And the answer to that is Richard is not really into doing the whole content YouTube thing. I remain really close with Richard, so in the meantime, he was my original co-host at that time. He was my original co-host at that time, so of course, me and him doing shows doesn't look like it'll happen on a regular basis, but I do have different guests that come in and help me out with the show, and we'll continue to do that. And if Richard ever wants to come back on, he's always welcome to come on, but it really started with me and him just liking to talk about the series and uh, that will live on because we will live on and we're still we're still pushing it despite all the YouTube stuff and people not being able to see my videos uh, through the subscription little box thing. Don't forget to click the bell so you get notified when I put out a video, but it is harder and harder. I get a lot of people that comment on my videos saying I didn't even know this was uploaded. So with not having big backing behind us, with not having any sponsors, I've been doing this on my own for seven almost eight years now and uh, definitely support it, like it, share it, comment uh, and tell us how you feel about the content. And that's how we keep doing it. Uh, because again, there is no money here. There's no money to be made. Uh, and it's just me. It's all my self funding, any equipment or audio stuff that I do is all me. So yeah, just help me out, help everyone else out, join the community, have some fun. This was a great episode. It was a lot of fun. Uh, me and Perry had a lot of good laughs and I hope you guys have a good response to this one. Let us know what you think. Me and John will be back shortly with another episode. But until then, enjoy this talk on Let's Talk Resident Evil. You're listening to the Let's Talk Resident Evil podcast. back on the show yeah. it's been about three years <laughs> yeah. four 
four years. Um, yeah, so the the main thing that we're going to talk about today is kind of the recent news that's been going on uh, or that's been coming out, kind of finishing out of the, uh, the, the, the branch of the end of the year where this is where people are like, well, we haven't heard anything on Resident Evil 2 Remake. Is it canceled? Is it not Jill, canceled? Jill, is that you, Jill? <laughs> Chris? Chris, was that you, Chris? Oh, that's man. uh that's that sums up the uh that sums up the the year in for for people that want the Capcom of Japan, was that you Capcom of Japan? Well, Capcom number 1 still isn't really doing too well currently financially. I think we talked about this on Game Complainers. You know, let me well. tell you something about Capcom. For the last like 3 years, I've been hearing they're going bankrupt. I'm hearing articles are going to come out. I just keep hearing all these bad things, and all I keep seeing is Capcom putting out statements that they're going to put more ports out of games on the, uh, you know, obviously on the Switch. They're going to put more Switch ports out. Like Revelations and, you know. Well, even uh, Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright, is coming to uh, Switch now. All three games. Really? Yeah, and I'm just like, well, I thought they were closing down. Because everyone's saying the status of uh, Resident Evil 2, the remake, is in jeopardy because they don't know what's going on. They're not hearing anything. Um, yeah, people are saying it's, it could have be canceled. I mean, that, there's a lot of, like, rumors, but... Um, I, I don't the, think they would that's... cancel it. I think, if anything, it's going to go down with the ship. But it would really surprise me and shock me if that game is not out day of the 20th anniversary of the seer of the, of the of that game of that resident evil 2 game it's pretty sad because <laughs> i was in high school when that game came out yeah it's like that that needs to be like that that was the ideal release but it seems now that people like and i told people on twitter i was just like just kind of wait for you know e3 because i doubt it's going to be written out at the sony thing the sony the only thing that Capcom has lined up for Sony uh, experience in December is Devil May Cry 5 or 6, whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know what we're at. 7, DMC 8, 9, 10. 5. And it's funny because they're ignoring the remake. The, okay. The reboot, so that's where I got thrown off. the rebooted off. series that people didn't like too well. Which is funny because I wish like movies would do that. I, I totally wish Nightmare on Elm Street would just... Ignore that reboot and just do like you know Nightmare on Elm Street twelve yeah. or whatever. Like a like a sequel to Freddy vs Jason, but just like ignore Jason and just like whatever wherever Freddy is now or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or yeah, Even yeah. ignore Freddy vs Jason, just pick it up or something. Like pick it up from yeah, Freddy's just dead. Ignore those or something. Bay, Michael Bay movies. You know what I mean? The Platinum Dunes uh, movies, but it, it, you can't because it's Warner Brothers is New Line Cinema is not what it was. When it began, it, it's now been you know subsidized by Warner Brothers, absorbed. I, I don't know, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, one thing we can also bring up, and I wanted to talk about post it being released was Arkley because it's uh, it got released as David as a short film called David, but I did a video on it, and several other people did videos on it, and uh, it's real. It's a clip. It's like a like a 10, 10 minute clip maybe. Uh, 10 or 15 minutes and it's essentially the Resident Evil TV show that was never greenlit uh, it was recorded and it had intentions to be the Resident Evil thing but of course when they released it online finally they had to change everything and not have any connection to Resident Evil because it never got greenlit but it's in the Resident Evil universe and it's very interesting because that fucking thing was better than all the live action movies I'll tell you that much just that little clip uh, the George A. Romero Japanese Resident Evil 2 commercial was better than the movies. Yeah, that's and true. And that was like a 30-second clip. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's like, I I watched it. Now, I don't and I don't know if you've seen it, but it's uh, definitely check it out. I have, it's, I have not seen it. I will have to watch it. Yeah, I did like kind of like a reaction the first time watching, kind of commentary over it. Um, but people were like, oh, you know, bring it back, bring it back. It's not going to be brought back, but... I did. Um, I did really enjoy that. I, I gave a shout out to the, to the director. I thought they did a good job. It was really like, it seemed like it took place, like before everything. And they go. They, there are these two detectives, and they go into this house, 
and this guy's like coughing. He seems to be like very, really sick in his car and he's taking like pills or whatever. And he walks in and you don't, you don't know like who this person is or whatever. Um, but it turns out it's, uh, it's his brother that, that, uh, died at the crime scene. And he's like, what the hell? Like, let me in the house, goes in the house. His other female detective, again, these are like new characters, um, probably takes place in 97, I'd say 98 or right around the time, you know, before everything happens in Raccoon uh, City. But he, they go in and they're investigating it and they're wondering, you know, he it looks like he shot himself, but they're like, well, why would he do this? Like, uh, blah, blah, blah. They're going over all the statistics and then they're kind of looking in the kitchen Um He's outside looking for stuff, and all of a sudden he sees, like, a shadow, and then he, like, runs in. He has his gun held up, and then it's his brother David, who is alive now with the T-virus, and he is just, like, staring at them, and he's like, David? And then it just ends. Um, But it was really cool because it was, like, it was very dark. (laughs) David? Was that you, David? (laughs) So (laughs) that was, like, it, it it was, like... He heard a big fart noise. He turned around. Flipped the gun, accidentally shot himself in the arm. And then his brother's like, oh, my God, you shot yourself. Even having detectives, I think, is a cool concept because it's like you're actually part of whether it's the Raccoon City Police Department. I thought that would have been a cool thing. Of course, I'll never see the light of day. But that alone was actually really awesome to see at least something come out because it was rumored that they were doing it, but nobody even knew that anything was really shot from it. Or I maybe... had no idea. I've been a fan of the franchise since its inception yeah, over 20 years ago, and I had no clue that they were doing these side projects. It's interesting, though, mm-hmm. because I want to know, when was this supposed to originally be released, this TV series or pilot or... Yeah, was it going to be How like a Netflix series? Up? Yeah, or like a Hulu I mean... I talked about it like, oof, I want to say like 2014, maybe, maybe 2012 or no, no, not 2012. We didn't have the podcast back then, but I remember seeing posts about it around 2013, 2014 about like, oh, Arkley, like it's, it's an idea that's pitched and who knows why it didn't get greenlit. Maybe nobody saw, you know, the, the money. It, it's not like it wasn't well done. And I guess they just, like I said, well, they comes broke. I want to know, can I ask something? What kind of deal is Capcom getting from Sony with the uh, movies? Because the movies are banking. I know. As crappy as these movies are, these movies are banking. What is Capcom's percentage from these movies that they're freaking out of money? Like, Yeah, because Sony Pictures are fucking, they, they, whether it's globally or just the U.S., they make a lot of fucking money, especially over in Europe. If you're talking like the live action Movies, they make a lot of money. That's what um, I want to know. Like, what is their cut? Yeah, like, like who, who's signing these they, contracts? <laughs> who's, who's how much are they the getting? How much are they not getting? Because how how is it they're on death's door every year or every quarter and they don't have money to put new games out and all this other stuff? And, and another question is, why are they holding back Mega Man? Put a Mega Man game out. I know you got the collection, the compilations. I get it, but again, more one ports. new Mega Man <laughs> game out that will sell at Gangbusters generates more money. You put more money back into the company, put it into a new IP. I heard they were full bore on Resident Evil mm-hmm. about a year or two ago. They announced, "Listen, we're full bore with Resident Evil. Anything Resident Evil, get out the door." So that that screams to me fire sale. I don't know. I don't know what it screams, but it screams to me like it seems to me like they're just screaming, you know, Resident Evil sells. Let's just do it. Marvel's Capcom uh, did not do very well. No, Resident Evil Seven did not do well. We'll talk Marvel about that. Marvel versus a little Capcom bit. did not do too well. Infinite. Yeah. I mean, they're just. You know what really hurt them. I'll say this here, and I know this is not Resident Evil related, but it is because it's Capcom. Street Fighter V really, really put a huge dent into Capcom because people were like, no arcade mode, like, what are you doing? And then, you know, they got greedy with all the DLC packs. and Like everyone else now. (laughs) 
Well, I mean, Street Fighter Five. I think there's like three or four different season passes. Like, that's ridiculous. You should just have one season pass, give people all the episodes over the course of the time span that you want to keep that game out there. But, I mean, people complain about an arcade mode, and they really didn't give them that. No. It was online only. And they did the same thing with Capcom, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. You know, they have their packs in place. There's no X-Men due to the Fox deal. And it's just a bare-bones copy of, I dare say, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Just with the controls back. So, I mean, yeah, it looks good. It looks really good. They, and again, Street Fighter Five was a good game. But they just, the way that they went about how they published this game, it's just, it, the model is just stale. It's not stale. It just didn't hit. It's a little flat. It fell a little flat. To, yeah, and instead of them going back to the drawing board, like they were just like, no, just keep making games like this. Eventually it'll hit. And it's not hitting. And I think Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, you know, that screams volumes. Resident Evil 7 I can understand because you went in a different direction. Fans are on the fence. You have half that like it, half that don't. Just like RE7. But, <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm saying. Resident Evil Seven, right? Yeah, they tried to do it's something a, different, and it and it you know divided completely di- down the middle. It divided completely, but the thing is, the sales numbers don't lie. It didn't do too well. So I don't know where they go from here. I know Gold Edition is gum is coming out. What in like two weeks, three weeks? Uh, I think it's like this. It's the same day the Not a Hero free DLC, but then I personally have to buy. It's, it's free DLC, but you got to buy the, the game you gotta, again. You got to buy. Well, here's the thing. You get the free download if you own it already, but the one thing you have to buy is the Zoe DLC. The Zoe DLC costs more money. So at this point in time, by the time I buy the Zoe DLC, I spent $300 on this game. One game costs you 300 bucks, and it's, quote, free DLC. It's free because they know you're going to buy all the other DLC packs. Oh, yeah. And it's just fucking ripoff. They're doing the same thing with Resident Evil that they did the Street Fighter and Marvel. Yeah, they have the same company motive for these games. And it's like the corporate, like, well, let's just kind of work on this shit at piece by piece. It's like, dude, I spent, I got the highest edition of the game. You can't even give me a fucking season pass or something that just has the DLC, dude. I spent... So much money. Also had to deal with your sh- fucking shipping issues, which was annoying because of GameStop and everything like that. And uh, whether that was GameStop's fault or whether it was Capcom's well, fault. Well, that was Capcom, and I'll tell you why. Because I went to Best Buy day of release to pick these games up. They didn't have any copies on the shelf. Yeah, same. And they couldn't sell me because I needed two extra copies for for each system. You realize, like, they couldn't sell me two extra copies? Because they're like, we don't have enough. We only have what people pre-ordered. Yeah. So and they, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So they undershipped them. They undershipped them completely. Now, I don't know if that was to drive demand like Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, let, let's let's ship a few out. This way people are like, oh, my God, I can't find this game. Or did they do that so you go, oh, I can't find it in the store. I guess I'll just buy it digitally. Wink, wink. Yeah. I, I think it... I don't know what their what their whole deal was with that one. I literally went to two other stores after that, and they just didn't have enough copies. And they weren't selling out. I was going, like, as soon as the, the stores opened. They did not get enough. Yeah. I, I don't know I don't know what that means. I mean, I, false supply and demand, so you go buy it digitally. I assume that's what they did because they want you to buy this stuff digital. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, it's like, you know, I, like, that's the main thing with, with, uh, with Resident Evil 7, um, you know, there, there are certain things that, like I said, like, I don't know why, um, why there's people that, you know, they don't have that kind of leverage with, uh, with getting things all in one spot sometimes, because now if you have, if you didn't get it, if you didn't buy RE7, and I remember, um, and I'm sorry if I forget your name. The last episode of the show, if anyone remembers and listened to it, um, someone called in 
and uh, we were taking calls and a guy was like, I haven't played RE7 yet. I, I just, I haven't gotten around to it. I'm not too sure about it. And I was like, just wait. Because I was like, they're going to release a gold edition literally the next day after I told them that before it was actually officially announced because me and you were talking about it. I was like, they're going to do it. They announce it. And I was like, there you go, man. That's the one you want to get because, you know, you're smart and you waited. And and uh, that's good. Sometimes it's good to wait because what are they charging? 60 bucks for this? 50 bucks? You do realize this game, it feels like this game came out two years ago. This game came out in February. January, I think. Yeah. January or February of this year. Which is also a weird fucking time to release a game. It's, it's, it's not even a year old and it's getting a gold edition. Yeah, RE5 was what, like... I, it, that was almost a year. That was like a month away from a year, I think. It was like, fe- that came out February, and then um, Desperate Escape came out after, it came out like March of 2010, and Resident Evil 5 came out in March of 2009, so you figure it's about like a month or two away from its year, and they and and they actually, and those were actually great DLCs, and that was it. They weren't like, oh, we'll give you one here. Well, yeah, I mean, and they were only Seven, like 20 bucks, yeah, R- 20 bucks per episode or something, right? RE7, yeah, like RE7 had like, I already bought three different DLCs already. So this will be the fourth one. You know, I, I don't understand. I, I understand because they want to milk people for the money. But why don't you just make this game, say, sell a base game for 50, 50 60 bucks. Then sell the $100 game. $100 game comes with everything. This way you don't have to worry about it. More that's, people will buy the $100 version. That's what I'm just saying. To get it right now. Yeah, because games do that now. They have the season pass or they have well, the whatever. Well, look at Star Wars, man. We talked about that the other day. I mean, I know this has nothing to do with Resident Evil, but it's you can get the $60 version or the $80 version. The Deluxe Edition. The Deluxe Edition comes with nothing. Nothing that would help you advance in the game right now. You still need to buy those loot boxes. And that's something new that they're doing now. But that's like a new form of uh, how can we get more money from people besides DLC packs? Because people are getting tired of DLC packs. And you can't have this like motive of like, well, we're going to take this piece and then work on it later. And then say, well, don't worry, it's going to be free. And then they're like, oh, by the way, there's another story expansion with Listen, Zoe. Listen, it's not like developers are making these great games that are just like golden bricks that are coming out. Every, you know I, I, mean? I discussed that. A lot of these that. games are broken, and then yeah. they want you to pay more money on I, top of all I this. discussed that when I streamed the DLC. I was having fun like streaming it. like I was enjoying it, but I was just like, I shouldn't have to pay for this. Like, I already paid so much money for this fucking collector's edition because I'm a collector and that's the point. Why couldn't you just give me a token or something to unlock something? Like why, why is this a thing? Well, collector's edition really means you're going to pay more money edition. Yeah. Well, Cause they're never, any collector's edition is never worth any money. And look, 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 I know people are going to be like, well, you know, you fucking knew it didn't come with it. Yeah, I knew, but I also didn't know they would also like have, Six different DLC. RE6 didn't even do this. I didn't know they were going to do, like, banned footage DLC. I had no idea. Yeah, like, like all this, I literally, all this shit. When I saw banned footage DLC put up, I was like, what is that? Like, a movie mm-hmm. that you can buy? Like, what? Like to fill in the gaps of, like, what happened to this guy. Oh, like a cutscene. game. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that that was DLC. I was like, what the hell is banned footage volume one? And then it came is with the a- uh, the uh, Ethan Must Die mode, and it came with these certain mini games, which, like, they seem, like, fun, but, like, are you really going to play them again? I don't I didn't, I didn't. don't think so. I yeah, I only beat RE7 them? once. That's, I only beat it once. I mean, even if you're a hardcore... F- you see, that's the problem. On Halloween, I highly doubt anybody played this game on Halloween, and that's bad. People are going to play the remake... Okay, on PS4 or Xbox One before they even play this game on Halloween. Because that's a scary game, man. Remake is a scary game. This, not so much. But, like I said, I have my review out there. People know how I feel about RE7. And it's like I said, it's not like it's terrible. I do want to go back and play it on the harder mode. But my motivation to play it is not no, it's really... Not there. It's not there like it used to be with the other games. Now, I'll go back and try to get the other trophies and stuff. But normally, if it was any other game, I'd be like, oh, I really want to spend a lot of time with this game you know, and try to get all the tr- stuff unlocked, but I did, I just didn't care. You know what it is, man? The game... As much. I'll just say right here. It's not that interesting. It's like one of those movies that you see, you're like, 
Yeah, I just need to see it once. I don't, I don't need to see this ever again. I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. There's a lot of you know movies I mean? like that. There's a lot of games like that. There's a lot of albums like that. Every form of media has certain things where like you can listen to it, you can play it, you can watch it, and you're just kind of like, eh. And I get that the DLC is meant to be like, Hey, we're, this game is still here. You you still own it, right? Or if you don't own it, you can buy it and you can play it. I get that, but it just like again, if the Not a Hero DLC is cool and like you know I like it, I'll say that I like it. If I play it, like a Chris Redfield's in there and they actually do something with his character, like I'm curious as the rest of them. I mean, because number one, it's been delayed. This shit was supposed to come out in spring, and we're at the tail end of 2017 here. It's already midway through November. And yeah, the one year mark of the game. Yeah. So it's like, you know, OK, so you delayed it. Is this delay necessary? Was it necessary? I guess we're going to find out. I'm going to stream it. I'm going to probably review it, uh, talk about it. So, you know, don't worry about that if you guys are going to, you know, uh, if you guys don't want to play it or want to see how I feel about it or just want to hear another opinion. Of course, I recommend everyone, you know, just playing it for themselves if they're very curious because you don't have to just take my opinion to, you know, what you want to play or what you can't play. I'm just saying I'll I'll give my honest thoughts about it. Um, if it's good, it's you know, good. If it's not you good, know what I'll say it's not good. As a longtime fan of this series, I'll be honest with you. I can't keep up with all this DLC stuff. Like I told you, I thought that was I, I thought the band footage stuff. I thought that was like a video. Like I, I thought that was like to fill in what happened in between the story and or wh- wh- what happened. I didn't know that that was actual DLC because they didn't really announce anything. They just put the game out there and then they said, "Yeah, season pass." Yeah. Like, All right. What's the new season? Pass? We don't know yet. Okay. That's I think that's the biggest problem. And the gold edition goes for forty nine ninety nine, so you save ten dot bucks. Yeah. Essentially. Good luck with that one, buddy. Good luck trying to get that price out of people. Yeah, that's like I, I, unless I think, somebody didn't buy it, like that's the. I only think three reason weeks after release, it'll be significantly down. I think it'll be thirty nine ninety nine. I'm not two or three weeks after release. I'm not going Guaranteed. to get this gold edition until Wait it until it, sinks, until it drops like completely down. Like I'm talking like because in a year this will be like fifteen bucks. Then I'll pick it up for Xbox One. And PS4 just to have it, but also with the Xbox One, I can play it in HDR. So that's another reason why it would be cool to actually invest in it. That's the only oh, real. Re- well, if anything, Xbox has no games, Anthony. Oh no, it doesn't have any games. You're right. You're right. Gears of War Four was lifeless. <laughs> this Epic Games made it, didn't you know that? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Well, the eighty the eighty hours of research. If you guys can guess who Perry's uh, imitating, we'll give you we'll give you a gold star. They can't guess because the guy's irrelevant. Yeah, this guy's like completely dumb. But uh, well, all right. So on the topic of RE Seven, this is perfect. So now it's time we're gonna. I'm gonna send Perry a link here, and I'm also gonna read what you guys had to say about it. This is the part of the show where we talk about. So I've been doing this recently, and I don't know if I talked about this with you, Perry. Well, I talked about it. We try to do this since August. I mentioned that. Um, so you know we've been trying to get it, but Perry finally has some time in in these weeks. So. Uh, we're going to take advantage of that and get some content out. But uh, the main thing is what I've been trying to do is read certain comments uh, and stuff that have been on videos from the community, the people that listen to the show, the people that watch the content. So if they're listening, your comment may be read on the show. And if you don't want it read on the show, then you shouldn't comment on YouTube because it's out there in the public. So, <laughs> so um, all right, let me let me send you this link. Hey, can here. I put a warning out there? Don't be triggered by my answers. Yeah, I'm like gonna be sarcastic sometimes, out of fun. Yeah, like like the one thing that me and Perry have a certain sense of humor with a lot of this stuff. We've been friends; we go back a long way. Uh, I'm talking years, and same thing. Like, I say something to Anthony, and it sounds rude or whatever. People are like, "Oh my god, they they're really hating each other." It's like, come on, guys. Yeah, like, it's wake like, up. yeah, like like some people say, like, "Oh, you know, it's you know Perry," because I got comments, you know, back in the day when we did the the thing, and like. Some people, there was very few, a lot of people enjoyed the show, but there was very few people that I had to recently, not recently, but back then I had to, you know, either remove or block it because they were just really being annoying with it. Um, and it's like, look, it's all in good fun. And plus, like, me and Perry go back a long way, so it's not like Perry's just going to come on my show and, and insult me and he's just getting away with it. It's like, that's not even the case. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, people. You don't have to upload the show. I don't. Yeah, hey, I just screwed up your podcast. 
Oh, all right. I don't have to upload it. Yeah, it's like it's <laughs> like, like, hey, what you know, the hell is that? do you not? It's like, do you not want the content or what? Um, okay, so this is a video that I did. Um, I don't even know if it sent you the actual. Way. Okay, wait, ignore that one. All right, um, close the tab because just pause the video and and go to the comments because that's what I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start pulling it up here, and. It's going to be it's going to be uh, it's a video I did back in August because that's essentially when we tried to record it <laughs> or record our show because I was visiting Perry the end of August and I put it up the beginning of August just to see, you know, to get some uh, responses. So um, this one's like the future of Resident Evil. This is me explaining that, um, you know, it's kind of discussion of what people think post RE7. It's kind of like a post mortem RE7. Um and uh, we got some comments here. So the first comment on the top rated thumbs up is Angelo o- Ochoa. Ochoa. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Sorry if I put your name. Angelo he said, D. Ochoa. They should make Resident Evil games like the remake. And there's people that say um, they agree. Uh, and there's people saying it was a mistake that... Uh, Sadic or Sadic 2008. What's going on, man? Uh, he he's actually a constant uh, viewer on the streams as well. And he said it was a mistake to make a first person. Nobody wants that. And that also got thumbs up. Uh, of course, they're going back and forth to some people. Um, well, pe- you know what it is. A lot of people just don't realize that Sony threw money at Capcom and said, "Listen, we have PlayStation VR. Can you make a first person game?" Capcom said, "Sure. You gave us a lot of money." Yeah, that's we're the, just gonna make the whole game in first person. The hell with Xbox. The hell with uh, possibly a Switch release, uh, or in the hell with PC. We're gonna cater to your PlayStation VR, which I think was a huge mistake, because you could have released Resident Evil Seven as a standalone, and you could have released Resident Evil Seven quote VR. On the PlayStation VR, which would have been exclusive to PlayStation VR. Which is what Sony does now. more PlayStation VR headsets. Would have made Capcom a few more bucks. And instead, they catered completely to first person. And claimed, well, we're going back to our roots. And I think some people saw through that. And if somebody doesn't like what I just said, I'm sorry. But that's really what is going on. Yeah, it's it's all money, money talks. And money. That's why Street Fighter V was online only. Because Sony said, hey, Capcom came out and said, listen, we don't have money to put Street Fighter IV on PS4. Then they announced Street Fighter V with partnership with Sony. Sony went to Capcom and said, listen, we'll give you money to port over Street Fighter IV to PlayStation 4 if you make Street Fighter V online only. Because if you do that, it sells PlayStation Plus subscriptions. And Capcom obliged. Yeah. Because they were like, all right, PlayStation 4 has the market. We're going to make some serious money. We're going to help them. They're going to help us. But that's what really hurt them. Because they changed the structure of Street Fighter V. And they lost their fan base. Uh, I heard there was an Ultimate Marvel... uh, I'm sorry, a Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite Tournament last month or something. They needed only six people to play, and like three people showed up or something. This was like an actual event. Yeah, like it, it's it's really one of the nobody showed up for this thing. It, it's like, you know, people and even even thing with the the people's responses. Like people are saying, "Oh, it would be nice if it was an actual Resident Evil game," um, you know, and it played like one. And someone said, "RE5 Lost in Nightmares." Uh, Bell of D Gaming said, "RE5's Lost Nightmares is the best way to go. You can have." The over-the-shoulder view or creepy fixed camera angles, where you where you don't know where the where you don't know where the monsters are going to pop up. You know, that's I, cool. I really don't know why. I don't know why they changed the formula in six. You know what I mean? Like I don't know why they did that. Five nailed it. Five took what four had, modernized the controls a little bit, and that was it. Yeah, it was good. It was with fine. co-op. Yeah, with the co-op, and, and, and... I couldn't wait for six because I was like, wow. Five took what four had and made it better. And people were like, oh, well, you don't kill zombies. I'm like, whatever. It's called Biohazard in Japan. Get over it. <laughs> but to be fair, I was like, all right, for six, they're bringing back zombies. They're doing all this crazy stuff. It's going to be great. I played that demo. I was like, what am I doing? 
The camera's flying up my ass. The, the running is all wonky things. and awkward. The running in that game. The animations are weird. Only if you play as Chris, the the running is horrible. If you play as Leon, it's like a different control The camera scheme. is like lower to the ground. So when you run, it's like the camera's like the following you. Yeah, it's an ass cam. It's like aiming upward. And it's weird because it, it gets caught sometimes if you like. And dude, the enemies in the game are so unmemorable. In six, it's like the insane clown posse. They're turning into cockroaches. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck am I playing? Like, what is this bullshit? Like, at, at this point, the only good thing I think about six is the, uh, what was that? The mercenaries mode? What's the mode with the Left for Dead guys? Oh, yeah, mercenaries. Yeah. Well, that was the, the no mercy. I, I think or that's the highlight of the game right there. Oh, yeah. Mercenaries is really fun. Me and Richard put like a bunch of hours into that game. I put a lot of hours into mercenaries. It was good. It was fun. That was fun. They actually did that great. But the campaign and everything, it, they they kicked themselves in the foot because uh, they kicked themselves in the ass because uh, um, all the stories intertwined. So no matter who you were playing as, you knew the other team was surviving somehow. And I think that was a big mistake. Because what... What's... What incentive do you have after you finish the Leon campaign to go do the Chris campaign? Because you already saw in the cutscene, you already saw in the cutscene that they're all together. So obviously they made it. You just haven't seen the actual ending for that that team. And then you got to fight the boss again. And I feel like they should have condensed it down to where like just you saw too a cutscene. Just effort just to find out what happened on what side. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and they also, they should have just said, oh, this is a, um, like, this is a prime example of if, if you have different scenarios and you're trying to link them together, like a Pulp Fiction-esque kind of thing, then yeah. you should condense it down. And just have a cutscene where, you know, like, with that big-ass, like, giant monster that Chris and then um, Jake and, Sh- and Sherry have to fight. And that, like, one section where it's, like, the open turrets and everything. They should have condensed, like, Jake's... Because th- since Chris's is before Jake's, or Jake is before Chris's, they should, like, condense it down with, like, a cutscene. Like, they go to the place, and then all of a sudden you see them, like, an additional cutscene where you see them take down the monster. So you don't have to play it again and do everything again and get frustrated again. It, it was just... It wasn't executed right there's just too much work to do in these games and i think that's why nobody replayed seven because seven it's not like seven is work whether you want to say you know oh it's fun it's work that's why like you haven't replayed it because it's a chore to play that game it's not like you can just you know uh pick up a couple of items and then go to the save thing and save you know what i mean you have to gradually progress through seven in order to save sometimes, you know, and you might not be able to save at the point that you really want to save at. I did a comedy RE seven for this though. It was scaled down more than RE six, which I liked because I feel like RE six was very overwhelming and there's a lot of action. Like RE seven yeah, was definitely I, you know better what, with paced. Seven, I, I think the problem with seven was it was too stripped down. There's not that many enemies. It, it, it's like, the bakers were pretty forgettable. Well, I mean, how could you forget this guy? He's chasing around the house with no clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're seeing this guy in his fucking underwear. Yeah. I mean, I know the color of his underwear. He wears blue underwear. He's chasing around the house. I mean, it's like you're at Kevin Spacey's house for the weekend. <laughs> you know, the guy's trying to chase you around the house with no clothes on. It's like you, you're you sitting there trying to play the game, and then I feel like a lot of these people in the comments, they're just like, why wasn't it fit camera angles? This guy, Deadass B, which is probably the best name I see on this page, he said, Resident Evil fans generally have been saying one thing and one thing only. Make it like the remake. Resident Evil 7 was a disappointment to me. I'm especially disappointed with the repetitiveness of, of one enemy type, which is what Perry just said. <laughs> Not to yes. mention, it's just a bland copy of an Ouroboros monster from RE5. And the final boss downright maybe not want to buy this game. I watched the leaks and based off my decision off that. I'm not a fan of Outlast amnesia style games, but anyways, the the uh, the final what do you say? Anyways, the final boss games games that hold your hand are becoming too common nowadays. The game straight up ripped the controller out of your hands and just said press the button to win. It was an interactive cutscene. 
man, am I getting older or not keeping up with the times? Because I remember with when a game had you work for the ending, not just a scripted events and press the R trigger four times. But the bottom line is Resident Evil is about zombies, not an outlast clone with rednecks and goo and goo monsters. That's that's a great comment, man. Um, that brings up a lot of good points. That really just brings up that there's and I always said, you know, in defense of the game before it came out, I, I always said it wasn't really as much like an outlast or an amnesia other than the fact that it was first person. Maybe it's going to do something different. But I do agree with the uh, uh, with really most of your comment. It's it's really like I don't like the quick time event bullshit, and and I really felt like it was too easy. This game was really easy. I'm, I know you can play it on the hard mode, and it's, and it's difficult, and you die in like one hit. I get it, but like what he said, you're not working for anything in this game. With the other Resident Evil games, you would have to play it like four or five times because you want to get the costumes, you want to get the guns, you want to get this, that, the rocket launcher, the Gatling gun, yeah, well, the infinite you know ammo. What, dude, it was fun, and guess what? As, even though the older games were sort of linear, they really weren't, depending on, like, what path you chose. Yeah, because you can backtrack fucking... And the zapper system with the discs and everything back in the day for Resident Evil 2. I mean, now it's it's a first-person shooter on, uh, you know, Resident Evil 7. It feels like it's on rails, but it's not on rails. It's like you have to play the game the way the game wants to be played. Yeah. And I think that took the fun out of it for a lot of people. Um, it's just not that game anymore. Not that explore, ex, explorative. I don't even know what the word is, but it's not a game where you explore like in Resident Evil 2. You can explore throughout the whole city. You could, you can decide to shoot the guy and not get the, you know, uh, you know, if you shoot on the way there, yeah, you don't get yeah. the, uh, the key from the, you know, uh, Brad Vickers. You know what I mean? Like, there are different paths you can take. And I'm sure you could do that in 7 at, to some extent. But seven's just lackluster because you're in first person. You can't see what the hell's really going on. I don't know, man. I it's mean, the, the not, only difference... To me, it's not Resident Evil. I'm sorry. I mean, it's just not. Well, that's actually and what... I'm, I'm open-minded to them, like, doing, you know, changing it up a little bit. But, like, in Battlefront 1... The big thing was all they showed was first person shooting and people were like, Can we play as third person like in the old battlefront? And they're like, Oh yeah, just hold down on the D pad. It's like, okay. This game you can't do that. They don't even want you to know who the hell you're playing as. And the characters, by the time you find out who the hell you're playing as You don't care. You don't even care about this guy. Yeah, this I guy's a wimp. I don't care about Ethan. And and I and I and I, and I like the fresh And how the hell do you staple his fucking hand back together and not not get all the uh, nerves attached back? You know what I mean? It's like it. It essentially they they try to. His wife was ugly too. She looks like some dude with like long hair. <laughs> oh well, that's the main thing. Is like the only thing that were you know that was like a choice that you had to change events was even like the ending where you choose to give it to Zoe or your wife. Uh, clearly, you're going to give it to your wife, and that's what the Zoe DLC is going to explain. And I, again, that should be included in the game. Like, why don't we get the Zoe DLC as part of the game if you chose Zoe or Zoe's escape? Like, why can't that be embedded in the game? And I understand that's just not what it is now. Because they want you to pay for that choice yeah, that you made at the end. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you're like, all right, well, now you got to pay. And um, another good point that Carlos uh, Cruz or uh, Cruz, Cruz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy. Yeah. Carlos Cruz. Yeah. He said, um, this game was okay. And again, he just really summed up what Perry just talked about in his last uh, statement there. The game was okay, but it didn't really feel like a Resident Evil game. It was missing a couple of more things. It wasn't a Resident Evil game, and it was and it was named something else. If it was, if it was named something else, it would have been amazing. The gameplay was great, but it was not a Resident Evil game. I miss the old school style. Zombies, liquors, hunters. I feel that Evil Within feels more like a Resident Evil game more than RE7. It was a step in the right direction. Well, you do hear people talk about Evil Evil Within 2 is a great fucking game. I didn't even beat it. I'm still streaming it because I'm doing Eternal Darkness and that game before the end of the year is up. Um, so I'm going to finish them both, but I love Evil Within 2, and everyone's been saying good things about that game. Um, and, uh, but that's a great point, man. I mean, it's the only alternative they have right now. Yeah. Because Evil so Within made its own good. lane. Evil Within is its own lane. It's like, 
it's not evil within wasn't trying to be anything because it was Shinji himself just be like, all right, I'm going to make my own lane. I'm going to make references to the stuff I've done in the past, like RE4 and RE1 and have some stuff in there because that's his material. But he could still make his own lane. It's making your own IP and making it something of itself. Maybe that's what this should have been or maybe the spinoff should have been that. I mean, that's what a lot of people are saying post-mortem of RE7. Um, and that, and again, this is from the community itself. So you heard it here first, people. This is what people are talking about. This is what the general person that watches content, Resident Evil content, fans of Resident Evil content, this is what the community is talking about. And that's the reason why I'm reading all these comments, you know? And, Let uh, me tell you something. If you just slap the name Evil Dead the Game <laughs> on the box of Resident Evil 7... It would have worked. would have worked. If you would have slapped Texas Chainsaw Massacre... On the box of Resident Evil 7. It would have worked. Because that's not... The expectations aren't set for those games. Resident Evil had a reputation. Yeah. I mean, it's reputation's gone to shit. I'm going to be the first one to say it. I know people... This is a Resident Evil podcast. This is a Resident Evil channel. There's a butt ton of Resident Evil people listening right now. But you know what? I think they'll say this. It's not what it was. The franchise has suffered big time. And I think that that reflects in their comments, like like what you're seeing, what we're oh, reading yeah. right here. You can tell that they even say, look, this isn't what it used to be. We want the old thing back. And I think that's why. I, I, I don't even want an eight. I really don't. If they're going to make games like this where they just like lame, don't even make an eight. Just do two, redo three, redo four, and that's it. Like, are they going to open this up? to more bullshit like like if i beat the dlc at the end with of the, the year, money that they made i i think this would uh you know close the chapter on this one right now and then they have to go back and scramble i don't understand because revelations 2 was really good i enjoy that it was it it wasn't great but it was a, a nice little side story and it's a spinoff so it, can, a, it could do it's yeah, again it's a, it could do its own thing with the characters Right, and I think that had a, a really good cliffhanger at the end. It's like, oh man, that kid now lives with Barry, but that kid is the next big monster, and they don't even realize it yet. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like I, I and I think that what they're gonna do now to scramble, like you said, we might not even get a Revelations three. Well, well, yeah, they just they, don't know where the hell to go from. They here. They hinted towards it um, in the past, uh, recently, as of recently in the past. I mean, um, and the one thing that they that they did was that I think from this point of view, since everyone's asking for the older things and, and Resident Evil two is a lot more community based where they were like, all right, well, what do you want to see in the game? And everyone commented, I want the fixed camera angles. I want, you know, a third, um, I want the, the third person fixed camera angles, whatever you want to call it. But also I want it to be, um, you know, just old school, like classic. I want this. So people are seeing seven and now their only hope is for RE2 Remake. And you can look at that as a good thing. You can look at it as a bad thing. Um, I look at it as both. I think that it, even even if they do Revelations 3 to bridge between RE2 Remake, Revelations 3, and then whatever other actual sequel we're getting from Resident Evil 8, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what their mindset <laughs> Dude, is. I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even bother with an 8. I, I really don't even know why they did. Look, with 7, I understand why they tried it. Because they wanted to see if it would hit. I get it. But they should have given you the option to go first person or third person. Yeah, I feel like that would have been a deal breaker for a lot of people that wanted to just buy the game in general. I feel like if you were able to... Well, you're taking them out of their comfort zone. And I think the demo... Look, I like the demo. The demo is really cool. But I think the demo... That was interesting marketing, yeah. The demo should have just been first person. And then when you buy the game... The game would have been completely different from the demo. And it is, but it isn't at the same time. Because that demo was getting you ready. It was like spoon feeding you to like getting used to the game style. Like, okay, we're going to slowly give you this, this, and this. Like beat for beat well, for I, beat. I think they figured, okay, let's get them. Let's give it out for free. People are probably going to love it. They're probably going to hate it, but they're going to get used to it. And uh, it's like the old Ric Flair saying, your favorite guy. If if you don't like it, learn to love it. I think that's the model they went with. Um, but I really thought the demo was just the demo. And I thought we were going to get 
get a third person game. I really did. I thought maybe the demo was just a wink wink to PT, like haha, we can do this better. Cuz the Resident Evil 7 demo was better than the PT demo. I, I you know, it it ran at 60 frames. It didn't run in 10 frames like the PT demo did. A lot of people don't remember that. It ran very slow. Um I don't know. I I just think that they uh they dropped the ball. Complete. They should have left this as a VR game. They should have left it as for PlayStation VR exclusive. This way it would have sold a little more headsets. And then you would have had your base Resident Evil 7 game, which would have been completely different. But it's like the fans are telling you what they want. I don't know why the hell they're not listening. It's it, it's always too... It's like with the Mega Man thing. People want a Mega Man game. Capcom's like, yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> it's like, you you need money. I have it. Like, Give me the blue bomber and you will get cash in return. It's like they just lately these Japanese companies. They just don't get it. They, they, they're really protective of their IPs and they, they're guarding everything. It's like, no, we have money here and we will give it to you. I don't understand what the big problem is. Nintendo Japan has the same problem. And I and I also think it's one of those things where you know, it's not it's not going to be, you know, if you drop the ball on two, on Resident Evil two, that's it. If you don't listen to your fans, I, I think if this game does not come out, you know, twenty years to the day of Resident Evil two, for the original PlayStation, if it's not out on that day, I think they've already dropped the ball, because. The, the bloom is off the rose at that point. Yeah. I mean, you already killed it for a lot of people. Well, what do you think if they put it out like fall, like this time next year? Oh, man. yeah, you know, It's going to help them, but it, I don't know if it's going to help them. That, I, look, that game is going to sell like crazy. The game's going to sell like crazy one way or another. But I think if you wait till fall, you're pushing it because now that's going to come out with a bunch of other AAA games. And it's going to get lost in the shuffle. It and definitely won't be let's face featured. it, they're really doing this for money, too. I mean, they're doing it for fan support, but also money. Man, Money's the name should, of the game. They should drop it in January like in the, like the one that came out 20 years ago. Resident Evil 2. I, I don't know what the problem is. I really yeah, don't. That would have been perfect, man. That would you know have what been they should perfect. do? They should pull a Nintendo. Release the game two weeks early digital. And then two weeks later, release the physical ones. You'll make double the amount of money. Because you're going to get people that want to play it now, and then you're going to get the collectors. Yeah. You're going to bank on that money. Nintendo did that with uh, Wind Waker for uh, the Wii U. They said anybody who wants it two weeks early, you can buy it on the eShop right now for 60 bucks, 60 or 50 whatever it was. And if you want the physical copy, you can buy it in two weeks. And that's what people did. And they made double the amount of money off of that. Yeah. Capcom is in a position where they need money. I would do it that way. You're going to get hardcores buying it digital because they want to play it. And then you're going to get those same people that are going to buy the physical copy to have in their collection. So, that, well, that's the thing because uh, this this guy says right here, uh, Doomsday, 345. Capcom's problem is that they do a different – they go to different extremes at the slightest bit of criticism when it's really – when it, when it isn't really necessary, people complain the old games were slow and cumbersome to control. So rather than refine the old gameplay a little and make it less cumbersome, or make a third person but keep it survival horror, Capcom turned the series into into a ridiculous over the top shooting gallery. People complained you couldn't move and shoot in RE5, so they had us sprinting and rolling, rolling, uh, fucking diving and sliding around like dead fish in RE6. People complained that the games weren't scary anymore, so. They made RE7, and as good as the game is, it just doesn't feel like a new Resident Evil game. Every time I play it, I enjoy it, but it doesn't feel like it's the same universe as the past games. I mean, play RE1 through 6, or even Revelations, then play RE7. There's barely any links or connections to the series, even though because the game Because it's a featured... bare-bones game. It's like they took a tech demo, and were like, yeah, stretch this out a little bit. It really is. It's really... I will say this. About the controls... They perfected those controls with four. 
Because when you play four in the GameCube, it's like, wow, this this these are the classic controls, but with the new control scheme. With the new uh engine, I mean. You know what I mean? Like it felt good. It felt natural and it felt fine. Five, because they added the you know, the other analog stick into the mix. I mean, I know GameCube had another analog stick, but that's another story. Uh when they when they did five on the Xbox One, uh, Xbox 360, and the uh, PS3, you got the other analog stick so you can turn around and move and all that stuff. In my opinion, they perfected the controls of 4. And they perfected it. Like, that was it, man. You got it. Maybe change the inventory deal down the line. Because people, you know, they got kind of annoyed by hitting the Y button while they're in the middle of an attack to switch things. That was something maybe you could have worked the kinks out of, you know, eventually down the line, but... RE6 inventory is awful. Six, six just, it's like... And the herb capsules and shit, like, what the dude, fuck was like, that? What <laughs> happened? Yeah, what you had was to mix, that? like, Tic Tacs together with the herbs, and then you gotta <laughs> shake them, and then you gotta eat them. It's like this big fucking process just to take an herb. Well, Ridiculous. he says, and he continue, He has a pretty long comment. He says, even though, and I like this Doomsday, thank you for the awesome comment. He said, even though the game featured a virus in BOWs, there's this underlying feeling of paranormal bullshit that shouldn't be in a Resident Evil game. I mean, Evelyn, uh, and I really don't know what Capcom should do next. Personally, I think they wanted to make Resident Evil into an action game. Then they did it perfectly with 5. But it's well, like yeah, Capcom look what was selling at the time. Gears of War 2 was blowing up the charts. Oh, yeah. And it's like it's like Capcom are so ashamed of what RE once was that they have to try something new every single time. I personally wouldn't want to see another Resident Evil like RE7. Then again, I also wouldn't want to see another RE6. At this point, I have no idea. I understand the fixed camera angles days are gone and Capcom are probably too scared to even attempt a third person shooter route again at least for the numbered games, but 7 isn't doing as well as they wanted, and personally for me, it was a letdown. The most fun I've had with RE since 5, apart from the remake remaster, was Revelations 2. And to me, the style of gameplay was fine, but if Capcom do, if Capcom does that again, people will complain. 7 was too drastic of a change. For me, Resident Evil 6 wasn't bad because it was an action game. Resident Evil 6 was bad because I tried too much to be too much and it buckled. Capcom should have just carried on down the RE4 and RE5 route and focused on a well-made game that carried the overall story. Maybe added more horror elements here and there, but 7's a drastic change we didn't ask for. So that's uh, that's Doomsday. So thank you, man, for that comment. There's some things you can't run from. And there's some things that never die. The human brain is a complicated bitch. Once an image is burned in, it's scarred there forever. I'll say this points. though. I mean, look, I I agree with him, but I'll say this: we didn't ask for a change, but we voted with our wallets because six, six apparently sold well in the beginning. So like but six it got million, so, right? so much shit that they probably, like he said in his earlier in his uh, post, they buckled and they were like, "Oh uh, yeah, we can't do this again." Yeah, what are like we gonna do now. Like they saw one thing, like, well, we can't do this again. Oh, no, well, we can't do this. We were originally this game was supposed to be first person. Wink, wink. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Let's do that then. Let's go back to the roots to what it was gonna be. It's like, no, you've already done this formula thing where it's not supposed to be like that. Revelations two. The only criticism I could give that game, and I really like that game. They tried to rip off Last of Us. Throwing the beer bottles and crafting. It's like, what are you fucking doing? But to be fair, they could get away with that in a spinoff game. Yeah, you could. You could. 
But Revelations 1 was refined. Like, you didn't really need to do any of that crazy shit. You could have kept that formula going. I, I get, though. I, I get it. You know, they wanted to be a little more edgy and grungier with Revelations 2. That's fine. But for me as a longtime fan, when I see that shit, when I see them ripping off Last of Us, I'm like, what are you guys doing? You're, you're the reason why Last of Us even fucking became a thing. Now you're ripping them off? Like, no, you're the innovators. You're not the guys that copy the other guys. And they become the guys that copy the other guys. And that shows what Resident Evil 6. Trying to be like Gears of War. 6. 6. I see where they were going with that. And I can appreciate what they were trying to do. But it was poorly executed. Probably looked fucking damn sweet on paper, but poorly executed. It was too bloated. There's too much shit too going bloated, on. Too bloated. Too much stuff going on. Too many things. But the, the, the real problem was the stories intertwined. And you already, once you played one campaign, you knew what happened with everybody else. It's like, why even bother? Yeah, and... Uh... And that's the thing. So with uh, with different, and it was all complicated. You got two Adas running around. One's dead. One's not dead. Yeah, Carla. This one's getting the virus. This one's not getting the virus. It's like what the fuck. Yeah, it's, it's like, like wh- what cares? drugs? What drugs did they take? Um, the Martin Martin Milk says problem with RE Seven is that a huge amount of people were just fine with watching someone else play it on YouTube or a live stream without feeling the need to actually buy the game themselves. RE7 is the kind of game I experience it by either playing it or watching someone else play it. There, there's no real value in vet replay value or anything that would make a normal person go revisit it again. Resident Evil 6, on the other hand, hand looked looked fun to play. Uh, you wanted to go in there and kick some zombie asses, Leon or Chris. Yeah, that one had a more like jump in uh, and start shooting shit. You know, to an extent, this is not the reason why people are watching RE7 on YouTube. Is because they want to know what happens, but they don't want to go out and buy it. And plus, this is the era of live streaming. This is the era of when people right, don't want. Right, but wanna, I, I you know. don't think I don't think YouTube hurt the sales of this game. No, I think what happened was people were like, "Well, I'm not playing this fucking game in first person, but I want to know what happens." So yeah. I think they, because Mark Main is a perfect example. He has not touched this game. He has not played this game once, but. As a fan, he wants to know what the hell happens, so he watches people play it on YouTube because he wants to know what's going on. He wants to be in the loop with what's going on with the franchise, but he does not want to play the game because he feels it's not a Resident Evil game, and he's not going to waste his time. So I don't think that just people, oh, yeah, oh, oh, that game's out. Yeah, let's just watch it. I, I think in Mark's, Mark Main's case, he just saw that the game isn't that fun. So what the hell's the point of running out and buying it? So yeah, to an extent, Martin Milk is is correct. But as far as uh, if he was trying to say people just watch gameplay on on YouTube just for the hell of it, uh, there's a big debate there because a lot of people, as soon as they see gameplay, they run out and buy a game. I'm like that, you know. But if there's a game I'm not gonna buy. You know, there might be a chance that I might watch somebody else play it. I don't know. Oh, I don't do that personally. But in Mark Main's case, I know. I Because I've talked to him. He just wants to be in a loop on... In the, he wants to be in the loop on the story, but he de- he's no desire to play this game. Because he feels it's not a Resident Evil game. Yeah, exactly. And and I think, you know, like I said, that really shows within, you know, like I said, within the community. Um, and, you know, you're talking about Revelations 2. Yurik Hunt says, Resident Evil Revelations 2, for me, was the best one since 4 because of the mix of action and horror that wasn't in 5 or 6. Um, I hope they go more in that direction, even though RE7 is really awesome. I hope they do a first, they never do the first person again and keep the original characters. So it's kind of like taking that one and 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 taking it over there uh but that i really think i really think that five gets a bad rap i don't i don't like it does i've always liked it i know people don't like it but the dlc man that should have made up for that i I don't understand why people are still on the fence about that shout out to uh (laughs) to to um crimson head elder podcast that (laughs) 
Oh man, uh, Paul does not like the the Resident Evil Five at all. But um, that that's just funny because Sir, Sir, he's a they're great guys uh, over there. Um, but it's so funny because you see the people that don't like certain things. Like there's people that really like six and they really don't like five. And then the people that like six don't, I mean, he doesn't like six, but it's, it's kind of funny because even, even this guy says John, John Despo, he says fans are tired that with each game, Resident Evil gets more and more unrecognizable. No matter why the game didn't sell well, bringing horror was definitely the right thing to do, but Capcom has seriously something against fixed camera angles and zombies. So that's true. And that's been the case. Yeah, he is 100% correct. The, the the franchise is unrecognizable. He I couldn't have said it any better. Or some people like would I say said, identity crisis. But that's why it's not the brand isn't what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me it. tell you something. All right. You you were what like a couple of months old when two came out. <laughs> you were just born. Uh. Well, I was I was uh, approaching a two. Yeah. You're approaching two. When two came out, yeah. I was a baby. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. I was in high school. The hype for that game, we had all the magazines, all the game informers, all the game pros. There would be like a three or four page cover story on this game, a spread as you would call it. And we were just amazed. All the fucking blood, all the zombies. And they're showing you this in the magazines. And we were like, wow. The first game was fucking awesome, and this is going to be even better. Like, that is hype. They kept everything the same. We got kind of upset that they scrapped the original plan because on that PlayStation Underground disc, it's a completely different game. You know, Resident Evil 1.5 is what it's known as now. But, you know, we, we took it for what it was. We were like, all right, they redid the game. It looks, It still looks good. looks better. The only complaint about Resident Evil 2 that I have is that all the zombies look like they came from a fucking Metallica concert. That's my only problem with that game. Whereas in 1.5, they look like f- fucking different people. They look like you had zombie cops that were all different shapes and sizes. You had different uh, color zombie uh, civilians. So uh, it was good. I don't know what happened with 2. I don't know why everyone came from fucking... Uh, from Metallica show, I don't know why everyone we called them. My buddy at the time, Ryan, he was always he was wearing jeans and a Metallica shirts. We called we called the zombies Ryan zombies, <laughs> like that. That's what we did. We called them Ryan zombies because they great. all look like they came from a fucking Metallica concert. Even the fucking women, <laughs> they look like they came from a Metallica concert with the belly shirts and everything. <laughs> The tube shirts or whatever, tube tops. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, besides that, though, that's the only criticism I have of that game. Zapper system worked great. Music was great. Enemies were great. It was just Resident Evil on a bigger scale. That's what you're missing. Yeah, uh, Vinny is crazy, says RE7 is shit and it's not worth anyone's time. I don't care for RE7 and its DLC. All I want is the RE2 remake. Capcom choice... Capcom's choice to to make RE7 Outlast and PT, Capcom still hasn't gave us most of the fans want. Fixed camera angles, puzzles, monsters. RE7 is poor with monsters. To the original RE1 had 10 enemy types, and they all sound different and also different ways to avoid them. Resident Evil needs to go back to the actual roots, not some lies I and half-assed attempt. Agree. Sure, they added puzzles, but that's not enough, and that's why Resident Evil is going downhill in the last decade. Yeah, he's right. He he hit the nail on the head. He got everything pointed up in his comment. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, there, there's a lot of there's a, a lot of comments here that definitely completely. I, I really, screwed. I really think Resident Evil should have just gone away. Should have just gone away. But the fucking movies are making so much money. Which God, what is it about these stupid fucking movies that make so much money? Because yeah, those know. movies made so much money, that's why they kept churning the games out. Because, like, oh, if so many people are seeing these, they'll buy all the games. And, like, no, it actually didn't happen. I think the movie has a different fan base than the fucking games do at this point. I really do. Because how are the movies banging out all this much money and the games aren't even selling a fraction of that? 
yeah like that that's the main thing is like you know trying to do something with like first person trying to maybe sell or move product um and that's one thing that mark rfc review says honestly i do like I, I do like the direction they are going. The first person I'm not a huge fan of, it was good for VR, but take away the VR, I felt like it was very generic. Like the first person horror games that we have now for mainstream. Uh, I would like to have the option to choose either third person or first. That's what a lot of people are saying. Even Bell OD, like she uh, says the same thing where she's like, oh, well, I'd like it like Lost in Nightmares, you know? So it's it's just, it's different because they want that, like you could change the camera angles. Like that was cool, you know? That was a cool thing. This uh, man, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Maybe this game should have been a pack in with seven to dip their toes in a little bit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they give you an actual game and they say, you know what? Here's a bonus. How do you like this? Like a little sample. Yeah, maybe like, that's that's what they should have done, and that people could have gotten their game, enjoyed it. They're like, "All right, let me check this out." While the fucking DLC is taking all week, or all month, or all year, let me check out this sample disc they gave me, and then you get feedback from the sample disc, or you know, give them a sample download code. I I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Dan man, I, I really thought five was good, man, with the DLC. If you didn't like the base game of five, I get it. But Lost in Nightmares was pretty damn good. Oh yeah, I and it's finally on PC, time. so that's good. It's finally on PC, fun. but you know what? It's on console now in sixty frames on yeah. PS4 and Xbox One. So there's no reason not to play it. Um, yeah, like even even someone like uh, Carrie T, uh, who I think believe he goes on Game Complainers too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Carrie yeah, Carrie T, our buddy, says Resident Evil Seven was a Decent enough game and definitely a better direction than Resident Evil 6 took. However, the VR in the game with the first person view was just a gimmick added to try to sell Sony VR headsets. Correct. Thank you. Um, as, He's listened to me too much. As for the future of Resident Evil games, I I really think they should return to proper old survival horror with a third person, fixed camera angles, ink ribbons. There's an old saying, if something isn't broke, then don't try fixing it. The Resident Evil games were never broken. But Capcom refused to see this. So, hit the nail on the oh, head again. Yeah. You see, I give Capcom credit for trying different things. But they did this with Mega Man as well. They made Mega Man Legends. They took his fucking helmet off. People bitched about it. Because they're like, we don't want to play as a little kid. We want to play as Mega Man. Oh, okay, Legends 2, we'll give him the helmet back. Nobody bought Legends 2. Legends 2 is worth some cash now. Um... But, I mean, then they did the Mega Man Network, Dot Network thing, and then they did Mega Man X, uh, the 3D X games, which nobody wanted 3D X games. It's like, fucking enough. Like, you bastardized the goddamn series. This is not what it was. I get you try to do different things with this, but that's why you try these things with spinoffs. You don't do it in the actual chronological library of these games. And Capcom just bitch slaps these things into different atmospheres, hoping that it sticks to the wall, and it doesn't. Yeah, it's like seeing what goes to the wall and sees and, the And the franchise and... suffers because of it. If they make Resident Evil 8, you really, do you know how many people are going to be fucking skeptical? At least with 7, they were like, oh my god, thank god, we get the stink of 6 off of us. And then 7 comes out, like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah I, it's like they're gonna be like what the hell you know and I, I, that's the one thing with um with with what capcom needs to to understand is you know people like that's really what it comes out like when it gets to a point where people are just like just release the fucking remake already like how it used to be and it's like do you not realize this is what just people want or that you're doing something wrong even dan joker here says just remake resident evil 2 make it like resident evil Remake 2002, is it that fucking hard to do for fuck's sake? <laughs> Dan Joker's been following the channel for a long time, and he's always hated the new Resident Evil games. <laughs> so, this is a guy who's chomping at the bit to get that RE2 remake, but you're not alone, man. You're not I really alone. Don't, I really don't see anything wrong with 4 and 5. I, I think, I, like I said, I think 5 perfected the controls. 
I mean, 4 brought the new controls and, and did it well. But once they started utilizing that second analog stick, I think 5 got it. 5 just wasn't the game because you're in Africa and you're shooting infected people. But, you know, you have to realize that in Japan, this game is called Biohazard. You know, I, I get people want zombies back and all that bullshit, but that's what Lost of Nightmares was for, man. You had zombies in there, not many. And you had some monsters in there. You know, it was still fun. It was a new generation of Resident Evil without really saying, you know, fuck off. But, um, I don't know. It's a hit and a miss, I guess, for some people. This guy right here, what a no. He says, Capcom lost its self-confidence long time ago. They should make a remake of Resi 2 and maybe 3, but then they should end the series, in my opinion. Uh, Resident Evil 3 delivered the perfect ending. Resi 4 was still... Uh, good though resident evil 7 is a decent game in my opinion but it's not a resident evil game instead of being creative and original they tried to be evil dead and texas chancellor massacre you, they, he said the same thing you said <laughs> really he said look, look at the page look he says they tried to be evil dead and texas chancellor Mas- who you, said this this uh, is i'm looking at the names right what now. a I'm... what a no is it towards the bottom okay he's got the <laughs> green thing right yeah <laughs> He said the same thing. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, hey, first of all, two great minds think alike. Yeah, right, that's number, true. Yeah. All right. Number two. I mean, look, they branded themselves in that position. Yeah, man. I mean, it comes to show like, look, people, people recognize this stuff and especially horror fans. Um, and like, look, we can get you're trying to swing and see what hits, but. I mean, come on, man. I mean, you could have done an Evil Dead Texas Chainsaw thing in a How different fucking game. Awesome. How awesome would it be at the end of the Resident Evil 7 demo? Let's just say they didn't, like, they pulled a PT. They just called it something else. And you download it. And you beat it. And you look, as you, like, get out of the window, like, you see yourself in the mirror and it's ash and he's, like, groovy. And he opens the window. You know how crazy that would be? Yeah. And then it just says Resident Evil. And it's like, holy shit, ash is in Resident Evil? (laughs) Yeah. That would be a lot better than all, all of seven, I'm sure. Well, because then your then your your expectations are out the window. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, well, they partnered with Evil Dead. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, and, um, you know, and then uh, you got oh Chris, Claire, Wesker, Wesker, Alex, Wesker, uh, Big Titty Wesker, Big Dick Wesker. It's like fucking <laughs> Weskers. How many fucking Weskers are there? There should only be one. Well, that's another thing, too, if people are criticizing, it seems, in the comments. Should be the is clone like, of 500 fucking children that fucking became gimps in science experiments. Well, that's that's the main thing that people are, are noticing here is that it, it, they seem like the, the stories have been suffering and the, and the overall art. Dude, arcs. just fucking, you know, if it was me, why don't you just have the remake? Just stop. Stop making the fucking games. You have remake one. You have Remake 2 coming out, and just start from there, man. Just try to fix this fucking story to make it, like... Because we know throughout the years, they just added shit in. Just It's like the Saw movies. They're just adding stuff in to fill in the blanks. Now that they realize that they've overdone that, why doesn't Capcom just pull back and be like, you know what, we're going to start from Remake. Remake 2. Remake 3. Remake 4, Remake 5, and fix these fucking problems they've had along the years and then get up to a point where they can make an 8. Fuck, Remake 7. Remake 7 the the, per, the proper way that it should have been remade. Or scrap it completely and remake it into a different game. Well, that's the one thing that, uh, like, Brandon Sanders, he says, like, another thing uh, that game is good for, this game is good for newcomers, um, for and the people that never played the old school ones and he said he played it on easy which i was shocked on easy that this game was is still uh challenging enough on easy which is why i think it's perfect for newcomers but that's a good point though because maybe they were trying to say well hey maybe this will get people in to the series but it's i think they missed the train already i mean like if you want to get into the series play remake you know uh you know yeah i, I don't think that this was for those people yeah, and, I, I, and it I may really be don't. for some. Like, for Brandon Sander, he said he showed his brother that, and that's what happened. So for him, I'm sure if that worked for him, kudos to you. Maybe he'll go back and play well, the other Well, you have games. to look at the generation. If yeah. his brother's a younger kid, 
one of the younger kids used to playing. Yeah, exactly. Call of Duty. Yeah, first person stuff. So or... this was Call of Duty, a horror mode of Call of Duty over here. You know what I mean? It wasn't zombies, Nazi zombies. It's an actual horror game with Call you know Call of Duty like controls. So, so yeah, I understand that. Controls, yeah. But I don't think that this should be for newcomers. I think that this should just be for the fans that want to play it. Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who the hell you would give this game to. Flip, Flipmo 360 has a nice lengthy comment. I'll read, we'll get into this. He says, I think Capcom should give us the remake of Resident Evil 2 they promised us in the same style HD remake of the originals, which sold bucket loads. Then, if that's a success, yes. which is most definitely will be done right and staying true to the source material with a few more new twists and turns of an HD remake of 3 or Code Veronica, then rewrite history and then keep the games true to the original survival horror concept. Exactly what I just said, buddy. Yep, exactly what you just said. Everything Perry and me and Perry are discussing, it just gets told in the comments. You guys because are on point. this is just the way that it is, man. They yeah, man. They fucked everything up so badly. And the community is letting people know letting people speak their minds and that's what this podcast is about and that's what the channel is about um you know code veronica still isn't on pc no that's the one neglected game it has that a still quote has hd not remake on the 360 and ps3 isn't that only in 720 uh i don't know it's probably upscaled because we're finding out now that like every xbox 360 game was like upscaled and a lot of ps3 games were upscaled by the way f- a lot of first party PS3 games a lot of first party PS3 games were relegated to 720p by Sony. So just so you guys know that they also upscaled their games. What were you saying about the X? I was saying if I had Code Veronica digitally, I could just download it on the X or X is on my account. I is it backwards compatible with the X? I don't know yet. I'm not I don't sure. know if that one's backwards yet. It might be. I could pull up the list in a little while. I, w- I wish you know? they, I wish they did, because that would be cool. Considering it's not, you know, they haven't done anything else with it. But um, he says um, he continues to say, for me, the problem with all the new Resident Evil games is that they are Resident Evil in name only. The main characters are there, I know, but they all, I, the main characters are there, I know, but I also, they also have changed dr- uh, drastically from their original design concept. Resident Evil was, at its best, survival horror, not an action-adventure game. I'm playing these games since 1996 when the first one came out, and the only thing I find scary about them is that it puts me on edge as I play... Or, the only thing I find scary about them is is that it puts me on edge as I play the newer games is how much they... Um, how much they butchered it over the years is the difference. Bring the series back to its roots using the new modern technology available today. The HD remake of the original is an epic masterpiece in gaming, and it's mainly based off of an engine from 2002. Um, um, imagine newer installments made in the same vein with modern technology that they could be epic. I had high hopes when the remake in Zero finally came to Sony and Microsoft consoles and sold so well that so well that Capcom on its way to bringing the series back to former glory but then they came up with seven and he put like a, a frowny kind of like a middle like f- like emoji face like a like a really like one of those things um that's a good point man it, it's because that's when that, I remember when they came out and they sold well I was like all right cool this shows that people want to play these games like the way they used to be played let me, th- let me tell you something all right I'm, I'm getting this in my head right now when you play remake and you go into that graveyard level that they fucking didn't forget to add in this time. And you go down to see, what's the first thing you hear? You don't see it, but what do you hear? You hear the zombies going, Ugh! and you're by the stairs and nobody's there. Then you go down the stairs and nobody's there, but you still hear, Ugh! so you know something's <laughs> around. That's what people want. They don't want fucking uh, an old 50, 60 year old man running around in his underwear chasing you around the house saying, come here, boy, and throwing you against the fucking wall and trying to run you over with a fucking uh, Confederate flag fucking Camaro in this fucking garage. Which, the fucking Camaro would smash right into the wall. Nobody's garage is that fucking big unless he's a fucking multimillionaire playboy and he's in fucking L.A. living the life of a fucking porn star in that type of a house. <laughs> What is he, fucking Notch? He's got a big-ass garage like that where he could drive around in a circle all fucking day? <laughs> that garage is bigger than a bathroom. How the fuck did he fit that car in there? Oh, and then man. he crashes into the wall and he dies a million times. He's like the fucking T-1000, this guy. That yeah. shit's not scary. I'm sorry. 
Victor the Red says, I'm still waiting for Resident Evil Outbreak remaster with the online capabilities. Oh, fucking get out of here. As in... <laughs> You'll be waiting until you're fucking dead, buddy. It's, as, it's not happening right as now. As in the direction of Resident Evil, the atmosphere in R7 was perfect, but I wasn't sold on the FPS gameplay. So, a lot we of people are saying the same thing. probably never see Outbreak unless it's a loot box type game. Unless fucking Capcom goes under and EA buys it, then you'll get that game with a shit ton of uh, loot crates and free to play aspects of the game. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying some of the similar stuff in these comments. That's why if your comment wasn't read, they can't even put arcade mode in Street Fighter. You think they're gonna be able to do that game? Come on, nah. Let's be realistic today. No, oh well, Resident Evil Fantasy. He he said he wants to advance it further, but they should have delayed that game until PS3. Where you had the hard drive, you had the free internet. That game would have done gangbusters on PlayStation 3. Guaranteed. What do you Outbreak. think if they advance it further? Resident Evil Fantasy said what if they advanced it further, um, but they didn't do the first person. Like, like if they changed it. Like if they if they kept a kept an engine, but they changed it further. But the thing I just don't I don't know if they're gonna just do that because I feel like they're just stubborn. If like RE two does well, like I don't know if it if it like breaks like this these records or breaks something, then maybe there might be a, a, a no. You can't a rift. Stay, you can't stay with that engine because it didn't make fucking money. Oh yeah, this game didn't sell, but one guy says we could stay with the engine, so we should keep doing this and lose a ton of money. It's not how it works, buddy. They go by the numbers. They're revamping that game right now. And that wasn't an engine, okay? That was just to sell VR headsets. A lot of people don't understand this. It's like, it's common sense, man, what they did. Sony ponied up the money, and they were like, here you go. And they're like, all right, what do you want me to do? Oh, yeah, hey, uh, take arcade mode out of Street Fighter. Oh, yeah, all right, done. Oh, uh, what else do you want us to Oh, yeah, here's some extra money. Uh, make sure that Resident Evil is first person for a VR headset. Yeah, all right, we'll do that. And they fucked up both franchises doing it. So, yeah, all you fucking PlayStation 4 fanboys out there, you know, you know, you, this is the reason why. Yeah, They no. bowed down to the one console manufacturer, and this is what happened. Two franchises were almost fucking destroyed. And, and quite possibly could be destroyed at this point in time. Yeah, we don't even know. It could have um, brought down the entire company. And, uh, well, that's the main thing here. It's, uh, you know, you're looking at... But maybe it's because Capcom has no balls. Yeah, they because... They could have told fucking Sony, no, nah, fuck you, we're putting arcade mode in. Sorry. Yeah, because their confidence Sony... was shattered with, you know, what they thought they had to make their standards for their games. Well, they're really. just like a fucking hooker. Yeah. The guy picks up the hooker. He's like, hey, baby. What do you do? Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, here's uh, two grand. You're going to have to do whatever I tell you to do tonight. Oh, okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no self-respect there. There's no pushback. There's nothing. Capcom, Capcom could have told Sony, hey, you know what? Arcade mode is our bread and butter. We'll give you whatever else you want as far as online playing all that stuff. or first person or third per like it's just it's all it's all raveled into one shit pile um like i'm saying in battlefront you hold down on the d-pad you're in third person it's simple they they that's why the character ethan in resident evil 7 they don't want you to know who that is right away because you are ethan you know what i mean because you have the fucking headset on I don't think people really catch that aspect of the whole thing. It's just an experiment that went wrong. And I think they need to reevaluate. Obviously, that's what they're doing now. I would just stop making fucking games and work work on that remake. Then work on the third remake and then work on Code Veronica at some point. I did like what... um, I did really like what... um, What... It was a uh, flipmo said is like you could remake three in Code Veronica and re like rewrite some stuff in the series like get it back on track through the remix. That's an interesting idea. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, get rid of all the bullshit out throughout the years. Like, why is there ten Weskers? Get rid of that. There should only be one guy. All, all that stuff. And, and can you imagine if they remade four? 
at some point down the line within the next five, ten years. If they're still around. Yeah, that would have to be incredible. Because four holds up, but you know what? Could always look a lot better. Could always play a lot better. They could finally get that down pat. There's things they could improve with the today's technology, which is what people want to see with two, uh, which is what Captain uh, Jab- Jab- uh, Jabber says here. He says each entry in the series had its own story and atmosphere. Uh, they cater to different fans. Remake geared towards a spooky mansion and eerie atmosphere, or RE2 geared towards a Hollywood cinematic style horror movie, which I prefer. It's hard to determine where the series should go, as each game is unique in its own right. In my opinion, if they exclu- if they executed uh, with good follow-ups after Bio 4, the series would have not been a mess it has become in 5 and 6. The top three games for me are 2, 4, and Remake, so I know what style of horror I prefer. I can see where you're kind of where you're kind of coming from with that, but no, man, it was a fucking sequel. It was supposed to be bigger and better than the first game. The whole point, the whole point of two, it was on a was bigger because, scale than well, one. Yeah, well, you're stuck in a house in the first game. Once you get out of the house, you're you're clear. But now you're fucked because there's nowhere you can escape. There's zombies all over the place. So I can see what he says about the Hollywood blockbuster type thing. But at the same time, that's kind of going over people's heads with that one. You're really overthinking it at that point, but it is what it is. Like you said, he's got his own opinion. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll re- we'll wrap up with the last comment here. Uh, Safe the edge. What's going on, man? He said, my thoughts uh, is if they stay with the same vibe RE7, just change the camera. I just don't feel like I'm playing Resident Evil. I feel like I'm playing COD Zombies Edition or Outlast or even a new horror title. I'm just not comfortable with the camera. Yeah, like I say like, I want to say like 70% of people maybe, maybe that's too high of a percentage. Like they don't fucking like the first person on Resident Evil. I can take it or leave it, but a lot of people just don't like it at all. And that, again, that is a deal breaker. That is... It's a fucking deal breaker. If hey, people man, look, everyone's kissing Sony's butt with the PS4, which is fine. You could, you know, I have all the consoles. You could pick whatever console you want to play on. But you have to understand something. This is the price you pay when you have and and people are like, oh, we want Microsoft and uh, Nintendo to go out of business. Okay, so then every publisher will bow down and kiss Sony's ass. And uh, what if Sony said, you know what? We want Resident Evil 7 only on the Vita. Capcom would have been like, all right. All you motherfuckers would go crazy right now. How dare they only put this on the Vita? What the fuck is wrong with them? I'd be hearing it right now. You know what I mean? This is why you want competition between all three brands. Because you need... Publishers can't be doing this shit. Capcom is doing it because they need the money. But, I mean, this is the end result. The end result of a, of a dominant platform. Capcom goes to them and says, you know what? You're making the most money. What do you want? Oh, we, we want these on our terms. And Capcom's like, okay. Like, you can't do that. And also, Mark Main is also not innocent because he doesn't like the fixed... He doesn't like the tank controls or the fixed camera angles. You know what I say to Mark Main? Too fucking bad, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> And we could say that to Mark Main because he <laughs> he has certain uh, ways of going about his opinions. With it. And again, it's your opinion, man. It's fine. But most of the people here that are commenting on this stuff, but I know he doesn't like the first person mode. So what does he want? He likes the behind. He likes behind the back. Again, I don't have a problem with that. Not for remake two, obviously. I, I don't want to see that in remake two. If they have to do it, give me the RE five controls. If they have to do it. Maybe they'll let you customize it for those people, but I really don't see the need for that. If you're going to remake it and remaster it or whatever, the hell you, it's a remake. You need to just make it exactly how it used to be with the controls, just so people can jump right back in to where they left off 20 years ago and just enjoy the game and have fun. Once you fuck with those controls, you're doomed. It could work. Over the shoulder, sure. That could work. If it, if it has the same controls as 5, I think you're good. Now, if they fucking make it with the controls from 6, that game is DOA on arrival. It is done. It is over. 
Capcom is fucking done after that. Because people will buy it, word will get out, the controls are shit, and it's done. Because, you know, people are going to be like, well, I can just play it on my PS3 or my PS1. Or my PS2 with backwards compatibility. The original. And they'll just enjoy it that way like they've been enjoying it for the last 20 years. But they they need to... They need to fucking... Like, you know what uh, the meme? Like, freeze, bitch. Like, they really need to do that. They really need to freeze, stop, and really think about this long and hard. Don't fuck with the controls. Give the controls like you did for Zero and uh, Remake. And you'll be fine. It's the way the game should have been. That's the way the game was. And that's the way it should be. You know, and thank you all you guys for the comments. It was great reading your comments and everything like that. Um, before we get out of here, um, I wanted to ask you, what, what's your opinion on the uh, Resident Evil 2 board game? <laughs> Which I did back, by the way. So um, I did back it. It was, you know uh, what I think? It was expensive, but... Is this official or is this from? Oh no, yeah, it's it's a uh, Capcom sp- sponsored the Kickstarter. It got over Why like six hundred k. Is Capcom that broke where they had to do Kickstarters to release board games? You realize I had a Batman and Robin movie tie-in Monopoly board game, right? Wow. Now I know Warner Brothers had a shit ton of. They still have a shit ton of money. Well, here's the but... thing though. Capcom wasn't the one who pitched the idea. I think it was another company, and Capcom jumped on board with them. Yeah, but why didn't Capcom tell that company, hey, pay us X amount and fucking start pumping this game out? It was equivalent to 90 bucks US money, so that's how much it was. Uh, it's from Manchester, UK. Tabletop Games. Uh, and it's Stream... St- no, Steam... I don't even know. Steam Forged? Steam Forged? That's who's uh, doing this. And um, I get email updates about it. It's apparently coming out next fall. Um... The last thing they put up was on the 13th. He said, we have an important mission for everyone. And it's essentially seeing if you wanted to add any uh, any certain car. There was like a certain pack that you could get in the beginning that had certain uh, like re- uh, Leon's like special costume in RE2. It's an interesting concept. I talked about it on the intro of my last episode, but I didn't say about if I backed it. But I, I ba- say, look, this but is I good for collectors, it. but I mean, I don't see people buying this shit and playing it. Oh, no, no, because it's so limited to Kickstarter. Like, I doubt it's going to get a wide release. Like, this is something that's going to be really limited and really rare. Right, I would just say, if you're, if you're snagging this thing, it's for collector's purposes, and that's fine. There's no big deal. I find it odd that 20 years later you're getting a board game. But... Yeah, I know. This shit should have been out 17 years ago, you know? Um, I mean, look, we had the Batman and Robin Monopoly board game. Yeah. You got Donkey Kong Jenga out there right now. And we got the Resident Evil card playing games, which I have played. I do own that. It's very interesting because you're managing different characters, different BOWs and ammo and weapons. Like I played it with my friend John and it was like it was just a, it was like really fun. Uh, but it was it was just like one of those like laid back things. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see. Uh, other than that, I think we covered everything that we talked about some of the the Arkley stuff, the Resident Evil discussion. Uh, the community discussion. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode of the podcast. Thanks again, Perry, for um, coming on, and it was a good discussion. Uh, yes. a, a lot of the community uh, pretty much said a lot of the same stuff we were saying. And keep in mind, I, I actually didn't read these comments in full on purpose until we actually read the video. So if you never got a reply from me, it's because I was waiting to actually read it on the show to discuss it. So I didn't even know going in what these comments are going to be positive negative in the middle neutral Holy shit, these comments were for august 6th yeah because wow. we were going to do our show late august but we just didn't have time when we went to visit because i was like let's try to do it in person knock it out but you know with between eli and jeff and everyone there it was just a little is a little hectic to try to get everything just like you know i don't think there's ever been a time since 2013 where it was just me you and nick like it's always well, yeah, else. because it's a limited time that we're all hanging out, so we get all the guys together. Now. Yeah, we try together at one time. So me and Perry were just like, well, fuck it. We'll just try to find another day for it. And with Perry's little mini vacation, we're like, let's just do it now. So um, that about covers everything, guys. So thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to like the Let's Talk Resident Evil page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter, Let's Talk underscore RE on Twitter. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, you should be listening to this on iTunes as well and Libsyn. So download the episode for free. Get that on your devices so you can listen to it. 
We've re- we've reached almost uh, four thousand total downloads um, on the Libsyn, which is awesome because I got the statistics and stuff like that. So that's actually really cool. Thank you guys for all the support, um, and uh, thank you again, Perry, for coming on. Thank you for having me on, and uh, hopefully I didn't offend people in your comment section. Hopefully oh no, yeah. well, the fanboys. Even though I think that you should play all video games and all consoles and enjoy it. Yeah, and um, and you can also check us every single Wednesday night uh, on Game Complainers, YouTube.com slash Game Complainers, usually around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we start streaming, 9 or 10, give or take, depending on our schedules. Pretty much Wednesday night is what I'll say. So, um, yeah, that's about covers it. So catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>